Welcome everybody. Uh, tonight is our third series of our destination series with the Travel Collective and tonight we're talking to Noelle about the Philippines. So um, you want to get started April? Sure. All right. Thanks everyone. Tonight I'm pleased to welcome Noelle. He's originally from the Philippines and has been a lifetime photographer. He's been in the broadcast and advertising world. So I just admire all of his photographs. He has a real keen eye for details and scenes that unfold before him. So I think we're really going to enjoy our trip to the Philippines tonight. So welcome, Noel. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me and welcome, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah. So uh, for you, being from the Philippines, I know you travel back often to see family and friends, but so why don't you tell us about what you feel are some of the best times to travel to the Philippines? Um, I usually go early in the year. Um, for me, the best time to be in the Philippines is during the uh, Christmas season um, because it's very festive and, and they, have, they, they celebrate a long Christmas holiday there. But other than that, my regular trips have been early in the year, which would be either January and February. And the reason for that is because that's when the weather is most tolerable. As you know, um, the Philippines is right on the equator. Um, mm. And so it's not only hot there, it's very humid. So if you imagine, you know, being in the East Coast or even Florida at its most humid, you'd have an idea what it is there. Imagine like uh, a temperature of about 100 degrees, but with humidity. Oh. And, and that would be at, at the peak. But during January, February, the temperature would be anywhere from the low to high 80s. It would be humid, but it would be tolerable. And early in the mornings, it will be in the 70s. It's, it's actually mm -hmm. quite nice early in the morning. Do you feel like there's lower fares during this time of year? At yes, the holidays absolutely. or January? Okay. And that, that's a good, great question. That's another reason why I go at that time of the year, because the most expensive airfare is in the month of December, where it could go up to $2,000. Oh, my but goodness. But right after the new year, it drops. And on an average, it's going to be around $800, even lower, depending on what the airlines have uh, you know, for deals. Right. So I know when you go to the Philippines, you often stay with locals and experienced locals. How would you describe the Philippine locals and just the logistics of traveling, say the language, money, that type of thing? Um, the nice thing about being in the Philippines is language is never a, bar a barrier because pretty much everybody speaks English. At the very least, even an ordinary person will understand you when you speak in English. They may reply in broken English, but for the most part, everybody there speaks English, speaks and writes English, pretty much everybody. I, I mean, countrywide. You, you can go to Metro Manila and you can go to the province and you're going to be understood. So that's the easy part. Now, traveling is not always easy because getting around there um, takes time because of the traffic situation, especially when you're in the metropolis. There are um, places that you can go to where you can easily fly, and the average cost of the airfare is around fifty to a hundred dollars uh, from point to point. And um, you know you can shoot some amazing scenery, and that uh, that will get you to a place faster. But let's say if I had to go north and then I took the bus, I would never take the bus during the day. I'd take okay. the bus overnight. And pretty much long distance buses there are all air conditioned. They even show movies. Oh. So if you if you if you took the bus at night when you wake up the following morning, poof, you're there. <laughs> oh nice. So but if you take the daytime bus, oh my gosh, I mean, unless it was some holiday where there's no traffic, you you're looking at a, a, a very long uh, bus ride. Great. So what are some of the highlights of the Philippines? Some of your favorite places to go and visit? And oh, I, I forgot the other thing. We were, we were talking about, you know, the ease of being there. Um, the dollar goes a long way there because um, it's around 50 something to a dollar. 
There was a time mm. I was there, it was 55 pesos to a dollar. So the U.S. dollar goes a long way in the Philippines. And uh, food is not expensive. Um, you know, uh, you wouldn't miss anything coming from the States because they have all the fast food uh, places, pretty much everything. Um, and the cuisine of the Philippines is a mix of Spanish and Chinese and, you know, their own local uh, cuisine. So it's really not that difficult to, to eat pretty much anywhere. You're going to find something that you can eat, even if you're not from there. One, one <laughs> uh, place I remember was we were in the northern province of the Philippines. And um, we saw a McDonald's of all places, a McDonald's. But it was in a building that was like an ancestral home. Oh, my goodness. So it goodness. was like a Spanish-era building, but it became a McDonald's store. And they pretty right. much served the outside of the store. So you're looking at it, and it looks like an ancestral home. <laughs> <It's a McDonald's. laughs> Isn't that incredible? <laughs> I have a yeah, that is incredible. Place. Yeah, so, um, and then the other thing, too, is um, places to stay are not... Uh, that's hard to find. There's a lot of Airbnb, you'll never run out. And I was telling April earlier, um, on average, you can look at paying 25 to $35 a day. Of course, you can pay higher if you want, but anything <laughs> less than $50 is pretty decent. These are like uh, studio type, one bedroom condominiums um, that was, you know, they were built fairly recently. So even when I when I go back home, I usually um, stay by myself. I would I would rent one of these condos, and I've paid pretty much on average twenty five to thirty five dollars a day. So I can stay in a place where I can be around in for most of the day, which is really the way trips um, are supposed to be planned in there. If you were to go somewhere, especially in the metropolis, let's say we were going to be shooting uh, the Chinatown, for example, we would go right. to town pretty much and we would stay in that area for the better part of the day that way we can maximize our shooting experience and there's a lot of things we can do there we can shoot street uh, scenery we could shoot some amazing chinese and, and uh, uh, spanish architecture plus we could make it a foodie tour well that sounds amazing yeah yeah that sounds wonderful so tell me about some of your other favorite areas of the Philippines. Describe now, uh, like. Now in the um, in the pictures I shared with you, um, also uh, taking into consideration that when I go there, I mostly either visit family or go back for a reunion. I, I go back because I enjoy doing a lot of my college reunions. So when right. I go there, um, I can't always shoot uh, where I'd like and be at places where I like to go. But there are times that allow me, you know, to be able to do that kind of photography. Like um, there are places in the metropolis where you can do that sort of shooting that I just mentioned. And then also mm -hmm. not far from the city, you can access um, a lot of wooded and park-like areas. Like uh, in one of the pictures that I shared April, in our last trip, excuse me, we went to um, a place where they had a, a uh, rapids, you know, like a uh, river. Oh. Um, right. And I would do um, a really nice long exposure of that place. Uh, and then also that place is actually a region that, you know, you might call an autonomous area, you know, pretty much like they have the Indian reservations here where, you know, it's governed by the tribe that, uh, that control that area. I was able to take this portrait of a native, an old lady, uh, I, I it's actually oh, wow. that I shared with you, um, and this is a, an elderly woman who has lived there for gener you know, for for um, the better part of her life, uh, and I thought that was pretty neat to be able to, um, uh, you know, get a portrait of somebody like that, as well as the opportunity to do you know a specialized type of photography, and then the other thing too is you can do um, infrared uh, photography because right. the country being in the equator, there's a lot of foliage. You'll never run out of foliage anywhere you go. And there's, so there's always going to be an, an opportunity to do that type of photography if, if, you know, if that's something you like to do. Now, in terms of places, there's a lot of places you can go to. You can go 
to a place that's two hours from the city, um, you know, and, and you'd have great uh, uh, photographic opportunities. One of the places that I want to go is actually far from the city. It would be in the northernmost island of the Philippines, and you have to take a plane to do that. But uh, it's a place, it's, um, it's an island in between Taiwan and okay. the northernmost part of the Philippines. And in that island, they have a, a tribe called the Ivatan. So when you go to that island, um, you, can, uh, you can not only do a lot of landscape and seascapes, but you can also shoot, you know, some tribal tribal footage, you know, uh, not footage, but photos. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then um, year round, there are festivals in the Philippines. You know, the festivals are part of their religious celebration and just, you know, like they have spring festivals. Uh, they have processions and you can see a lot of local color. You know, even in, in the time that, you know, like I go there, you know, um, right. the last time I was there in December, we were in the northern province where my sister-in-law lived, and they had a festival between Christmas and uh, the New Year, and I was able to photograph that. that. Oh, um, that's and, wonderful. And that festival, you know, features a lot of native crafts, and that whole festival revolved around pottery and clay, which is how the town hmm. started. Pretty amazing it's really interesting that's really interesting now if you were for example if one were to travel to the philippines for a photo tour i would recommend at least 10 days i know that's going to be a lot for many people but you need to understand anywhere you go in asia for example or australia or new zealand any one of those places because in the same general area you're talking about a 13 to 15 hour flight easily going there, right. going back right. short, but going there takes a long time. So even with those 10 days, you're going to lose three days just traveling. Wow. And that pretty much leaves you just seven days. Right. And you take into account that in order for you to maximize your photography, it's better for you to be at one place a day that's the way to work around the traffic situation. And if you have to fly out somewhere, uh, which is very likely, uh, you're going to have to factor in the, um, you know, the flight. And usually right. you're going to lose a day just doing that. So I would recommend for an initial trip, staying close to the metropolis and shooting within an hour or two hours from the metropolis and doing just one out-of-town trip to some location, um, that would be ideal. And you can maximize those mm -hmm. seven days. Yeah. So there's several islands that make up the Philippines that you can, that you need to take a little boat to if people want to see oh, that yeah. type of scenery or? Sure. The Philippines has about 7,600 something islands. Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> now the biggest <laughs> island, the biggest island uh, is Luzon, the biggest island, and then the Visayas Island group right in the middle, and then you have Mindanao at the very bottom. Um, but taken together, the archipelago is about 7,600-something islands. Um, and uh, you can visit an island group, which we did, and I told you about this. Um, when my wife and I celebrated 25 years, uh, we went to an island group called Coron, which is in the southern uh, part of the country, southwestern part of the country. And you can see limestone islands, like little limestone islands that wow. are almost untouched. You can take a boat ride and go island hopping to each oh island. And you can also snorkel, you know, uh, in clear waters. So it, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds incredible. Do you have any uh, travel mishaps or lessons that we should be aware of to share with us? Um, just, you know, maybe um, delayed flights, that can happen. Um, so if you're flying out to some out of town trip, it's better to leave first thing in the morning. That way you take the first trip out. And then um, I know people would 
would like to maximize their day, but just be aware that if you're taking, you know, one of the last flights out, you could be delayed. And sometimes you won't be. It, it just depends. But um, those things can happen. That's why it's very hard if you schedule more than one, um, more than one out of town flight, especially if it's several hours, which usually amounts to about uh, at least maybe two, three hours to the longest one would be like four hours, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a four hour flight to go somewhere. Um, but if let's say you're, you're coming back at the end of the day or night, uh, there's always a chance that your flight could be delayed. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some tips for packing or suggested items or skills that we might need if we were planning a trip to the Philippines? Well, um, I usually take uh, mirrorless cameras with me because if I have to pack my equipment, I have to pack them, uh, you know, in, in a bag that I can carry all of them at once. Right. Um, so uh, this is, you, you could bring any, any camera for that matter, but um, I, I have a, a Fuji system. I use a couple of Fuji cameras. Um, it doesn't have to be Fuji. You could use Sony, you could use a Canon mirrorless, whatever. But the nice thing about mirrorless cameras is the cameras are small. And especially if they're crop sensor cameras, then the lenses would also be smaller. And you can pack them in a little right. uh, low pro that I have that's like half the size of my DS DSLR bag. And in right. that bag, you might be surprised, I will have two cameras and five or six lenses. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And now, I know you mentioned to no, me. No, no, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, you mentioned to me something about insect repellent. I think you should share a little bit about oh, yeah. that. About <laughs> so if you were going to the province, if you were leaving the metropolis and you were going to, uh, you know, a more of a rural provincial area, um, you should pack some insect repellent because, you know, you, the mosquitoes would have a feast. They particularly like blood that's not from the country. Right. They, they think it's richer. That, that's, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, now, we're not and talking we, about like big Minnesota type mosquitoes. No, these are tiny, but they'll swarm all over you. So just be prepared. Have you ever for that. worn like, like a no, face no, net? No, you, don't, that be? <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't really have to do that, but. Um, when you're out and about, especially if it was late afternoon or evening, that can happen. But if you're staying in a fairly decent place and, um, and uh, uh, you know, you're, you're within town, you're not going to any particular thickly wooded area, you may not need it. But it's, it's better to be prepared. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> So tell me about some of uh, Philippine-type foods that are not to miss, because I know you were telling me what a moon cake was, and I'm sure there were some other dishes that you should experience. Yeah. Um, uh, the most popular Filipino food, and even even here in the States, you know, most, you know, a, a lot of, of Americans know about them, would be what they call adobo, which is a type of stew. Um, and it would be either pork or chicken or a mix of pork and chicken. Uh, and it would be stewed and it's very tasty. Uh, it would have a mix of um, soy sauce, vinegar and sugar. So it would have just the right amount of sweetness and tart. And it's a very rich stew. That's really tasty. And, and everybody there pretty much grew up with that. The other um, popular dish is called pancit which is kind of like a, um, I wouldn't, I don't want to say chow mein, but it, it, it's very similar. It's influenced by the Chinese. And these are okay. uh, glass noodles, which with vegetable and, and uh, either meat, chicken or beef that are mixed with it. Um, so that, you know, it's like a, it's like a Chinese uh, noodle dish, uh, except that these are very thin glass noodles. Uh, with vegetables and, and some type of meat. And it's also very tasty. And then, of course, they have all kinds of fried rice, you know, which is, I, to me, was of a, a Spanish influence because, 
you know, um, it would be like a paella, but localized, something like that. And then they have their own version, right. chow mein, you know. Um, and the thing with, with the, the cuisine in the Philippines is different regions have their own different uh, type of specialty food. And just like oh, in China, okay. it, for example, if you went to Shanghai in the Cantonese area of China, they like a lot of spicy food. And there's a region in the Philippines that's known for those kinds of, uh, of cooking. And it's in an area where a very famous volcano is. It's called the Mayon Volcano, which is pretty much as perfect as Mount Fuji. Hmm. And it's in that southern area of the Philippines um, where that spicy cuisine is known for. They use a lot of coconut milk, pretty much pretty similar to the way the Thai use coconut milk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that but sounds good. You can go to any place in the Philippines, and if you don't like the local cuisine, you can always get fast food. I can promise <laughs> that to any, anyone traveling from the state. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> What tell me a little bit more about the if you leave Manila and it's not comfortable if you're not familiar or would it be best to hire a guy to take you? That's a good question. Um, if it's your first time coming to the Philippines, if you don't know anybody, it would be great to have a guide because your guide can help you uh, and ca can help facilitate a, a lot of things. For example. They can refer you to a to a place to stay because usually if they're a guide, then they're hooked up, you know, with all sorts of support services, and they can they can recommend you um, uh, a car. Now you can rent a car there uh, either through a car rental company or you can rent it to a through a private individual. There are private individuals there that actually rent their cars, oh, wow. and they also have they also have an Uber uh, type service. Uber used to be there, but Uber pulled out a few years ago. But they have okay. a service called Grab Cab, which is kind of like an Uber. Um, and taxi in the Philippines, you know, like a, a, a Uber type service isn't very expensive. You know, you'll be spending like five to ten dollars uh, to go oh, anywhere. Wow. Um, pretty much. And then you have the option to either ride solo or, you know, to do a pool where you ride with other passengers. So even if you didn't rent a car, you can go around the metropolis just taking that type of Uber service. And the other thing, too, is, uh, that I was going to say is um, th there are huge malls in the Philippines, huge. They would rival any mall in the world in terms of size. Oh, wow. Maybe not opulent, but definitely in terms of size. And these malls are used as point-to-point -point transportation places. So the developers of these malls have their own fleet of air-conditioned bus. So, for example, if I was in, in the southern part of the, of the metropolis in this particular mall area, I can go to the northern part of the metropolis just taking these air-conditioned buses to go to that place. And that oh, will wow. pretty much bring me close to any place I'd like to go in that northern area. And when I get there in that um, in that particular mall, then I could just take a, an Uber uh, service to go to a, the specific place I need to go. That's nice. That's really helpful. That sounds like oh, really plus, good information there's to also save money. What call the, um, the metro trains, which is kind of like our trains here, except that they're all above ground. They have no underground trains. And the nice thing about the, the train system there is that, you know, they're, they're not uh, affected by traffic. Because there's really there's really bad traffic there, pretty much like Bangkok. Okay, it's oh. really. But if you were taking the train, then you know you would save a lot of time. The only thing to remember is the trains are pretty crowded, really crowded. Yeah, if if you're um, kind of sensitive about being in a packed uh, space, then you might right. not want to take the train. You can always take an air conditioned bus. It will take just take you longer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's really good to know. So tell yeah. me a little bit about the history and architecture. I know when we were chatting before, you were explaining a little bit about the architecture in Manila, because uh, some of us are not, you know, we've never visited there. So, yeah. So um, 
so the Philippines, um, the the Philippines have uh, had the Spanish, um, who were their colonial masters for several hundred years. Uh, before that, there were a lot of natives, you know, um, very similar to like uh, African American, but just smaller natives. They were called Negritos, and um, not not to be racist or anything, but that's really the way they are pronounced, and that's really what they're called. They're like okay. uh, uh, they're like African Americans, like from Africa, African natives, but they're much smaller. They're very small. They're like less than five feet in height. And those were some of the original natives that were living in the Philippines. And then there was an influx of Mayan type, you know, from Indonesia, Malaysia, and all these Malay uh, island groups around the area um, that, you know, that uh, came to the Philippines. And then from there, the Philippines was uh, colonized by Spain. Ferdinand Magellan came to the Philippines, um, you know, in the name of, of the Spanish king. And because of that, the the Spaniards um, occupied the, the Philippines. They were the Philippines was a province of Spain for over four hundred years. Oh That's goodness. why the oldest university in the Philippines, where I came from, by the way, is older than any school here in the state, because that that particular institution is over four hundred years old as well. Wow. So wow. they would rival any of the old universities um, in Europe. And then so then after, you still see sorry. go ahead. After no, the, so you would still see those actual buildings then oh, at the yes. university. Yes. In fact, the main building of my alma mater um, preserved the original. I mean, it would look as old as it looked when it first started. They preserved the architecture of the building. The the masonry pretty much would still be intact and the same. I mean, they must they may have done a lot of repairs, but it pretty much looks the way it looked, you know, from the get go. Um, and then after the war, uh, no, before the war, during the uh, 20s and 30s, the Americans, you know, um, occupied the Philippines, you know, and, and introduced, you know, the American culture and educational system. And that's why a lot of Filipinos pretty much speak, write, and understand English, it's, you know, because of that. And that, I believe, something we're thankful for, you know? Right. Yeah. And then uh, uh, the Philippines became independent after World War II. Yeah. It sounds like an amazing country to visit, Noel. I'm really fascinated by... What, what you've described as far as landscape and the buildings and the history and then just kind of some of the ease of being, you know, the English speaking aspect. I mean, it just sounds amazing. I think we're going to go ahead and open it up for questions.